Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm a little mind blown right now. I never, I never heard uh, people are God's enemy before, so I'm kind of still uh, digesting that. Uh, I've found at like Bitcoin conferences, like my brain is a cup, and like I hear three interesting talks, and then it fills up, and then every all the rest of the knowledge, the day, whole day is just water falling off the sides. Um, so yeah, my cup runneth over. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, all the organizers. I'm really happy this exists. I really appreciated the worship. Uh, I didn't know how much I needed that uh, this morning, but I really did, and that was just that was wonderful. So let me see. I've got my my notes here. Um, rehearse slideshow. So I want to talk about uh, God versus Bitcoin, and. It's definitely some very similar themes to, to, to what Jordan was talking about. Um, I call it like the, the tale of, of two pearls. Um, so about me, just so you know where I'm coming from before I, 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 I get into this. Um, I've been into Bitcoin for a few years. I got really into Bitcoin. I, now I work at a Bitcoin company. I moved to Austin because there were Bitcoin developers in Austin. Most of my close friends are Bitcoiners. I really. I really like uh, uh, Bitcoin. And, and then also um, a disclaimer, uh, this is not spiritual advice. Um, I'm, I guess you guys are familiar with the, past, the, the passage about like the, the responsibility of a shepherd to the flock, right? I'm like a shepherd. I'm gonna be reading a lot of Bible verses right now, but I'm not a pastor, I'm, you know, I'm not ordained. Uh, so you know, please consult your, your pastor um, for anything. Um, <laughs> So what I want to talk about is, is uh, this, uh, there's a, a lot of think pieces um, I see, I feel one pops up every month or so, where, where um, I think well-meaning Bitcoiners compare Bitcoin to God or Bitcoin to religion. Uh, I got a few of these. Um, there's an article called Bitcoin as a Spiritual Path by Sama Kataro. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, they say, uh, uh, Bitcoin started as a technical interest that turned into an investment that morphed into a sort of religion for me. Uh, there's a piece by Eric uh, Kason, or Kason uh, Messianic Bitcoin. Uh, he says, Satoshi Nakamoto is God's chosen prophet of this new technological age, and he is the figure he, he, he italicizes that, the figure who can change the destiny of the whole of humanity for good. Um, Eric has another piece. I, I really, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to be picking on anybody, but uh, he, he's really into this theme, the theological conquest of money. The, the subtitle, the messianic power hidden in Bitcoin and how it can save the world. Um, he says in there, cryptography creates an opening for the messianic possibility of using this technology to save humanity from the impending horrors we all know are lurking just beyond the horizon. Um, and what, one more piece, there's a lot of these, but uh, uh, I just picked four. Uh, uh, it's called Money Messiah, uh, God, Bitcoin, and the Evolution of Consciousness by John Vallis. And this piece kind of prompted me to start like thinking about this of um, how do how do I respond? And uh, it's it's really long. It's really logical. It's really real, real reasons. It's also kind of dense and a little hard to read. Um, but John Vallis has been thinking a lot about this. He's got podcast episodes. He's interviewed people. This is a theme that is occurring to him. Uh, you know of is Bitcoin God to me, in a sense? And I, I mean, it's, I, I'm sorry to paraphrase him because you know this, there's a lot of depth and nuance to what he's saying, but uh, here's some experts. Um, and he talks about whether the historical character of Jesus Christ existed or not, the articulation of the manner in which his existence was constituted, his behavioral narrative, is what is most instructive. Jesus was the representation of someone who embodied the principles of God or the structure of reality, if you like, in the most high-resolution manner yet to be articulated. Uh, and he later on, you know, he's like, well, what if, you know, Bitcoin is a new, better version of that? Um, 
Is the enterprise of culture or the emergent phenomenon that represents more than anything else the very mechanism for the construction of a more high fidelity representation of these principles and the richer experience of life which greater clarity or understanding of them fosters? If so, is it possible that Bitcoin has a higher resolution implementation of the fundamental principles which are represented in Christ, the philosopher's stone or the central hero or symbol of, of other cultural traditions? If code is law, has God's law now been instantiated in code? A preposterous notion perhaps, but is it so easily dismissed? And uh, I would encourage you, I mean, this is a very long piece. I encourage you to try to read it and uh, try to dismiss it. You know, it's, uh, there's, there's a lot of thought that, that went into it. Uh, and these pieces that I, I just mentioned, they terrify me as a Christian and as a Bitcoiner. Uh, most of the Bible is about people choosing to worship something over God or people who are serving God being warned about the danger of choosing something over God. Um, and like Jordan mentioned, a story that comes to my mind is, is the Tower of Babel. Um, these people, they, they invented a new technology. It says, come let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. So they used brick instead of stone and tar instead of mortar. And then come, they said, let us build for ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the earth. Then the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the sons of men were building. And the Lord said, if they have begun to do this as one people speaking the same language, then nothing they devise will be beyond them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them from there over the face of all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel, for there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. And from that place, the Lord scattered them over the face of all the earth. So I'm, I'm scared that we could end up in a Babel scenario with Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is a shared language of value. would be one way uh, to think about it. And I, I, I believe that um, God could or would or will uh, confuse this shared language we have if we worship Bitcoin instead of God. It says nothing in that passage that the tower was like dumb or fiat, you know. Uh, but I, just, I believe very strongly that humans, in opposition to God, will always be thwarted by God. Uh, there's another story uh, that comes to mind, and I don't even really fully grasp why I associate this topic with this. But it's the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Uh, the people of Israel are worshiping Baal, a, a, a false god or a, a, a shit coin, as some might say. Um, and Elijah basically does a wager. He says, um, I believe God, uh, uh, you know, you, you make your offering, I'll make my offering. Whoever's God lights the offering on fire first wins. And uh, the prophets of Baal go for it for some reason, I have no idea. Uh, maybe they really believed in Baal. Um, and uh, and they, they took the bit bowl that was given them, prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, shouting, Oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no sound, and no one answered as they leaped around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them, saying, Shout louder, for he is a god. Perhaps he is deep in thought or occupied or on a journey. Perhaps he is sleeping and must be awakened. Uh, Bitcoin has no supernatural or saving power. If I pray to Bitcoin to set my lighter on fire, my lighter, my altar on fire, uh, I'm gonna look, I look as silly as, as the prophets of Baal when I worship something other than God. Uh, I'm also reminded of the people of Israel who, as immediately after being miraculously re rescued from Egypt, took their earrings off, made a golden calf out of it, and worshipped it. Um, this is a, a very entrenched thing in the human uh, spirit for some reason, uh, to worship anything other than God, the most obviously worshipable thing. 
Um, but it's also kind of no surprise that, you know, if I believe as a Christian that everybody worships, everybody worships something, so of course someone who doesn't worship God is going to find something to worship, so, so why not worship Bitcoin? It's not a surprise. So why does this bother me so much? Why am I personally so terrified? Why do these pieces, like I see them on, come by on Twitter and I'm so triggered? Uh, maybe I need to look at the, the, the speck of my own eye. Um, when you look at the speck in your brother's eye but fail to notice the beam in your own eye, how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your own eye while there's still a beam in your own eye? You hypocrite, says Jesus. He's talking about me. You, um, you never notice that the things that bother you the most about other people are the things that you struggle with yourself. Um, and is, so is it possible that this tendency to worship Bitcoin is a problem that I have in my own heart? Um, so I'm thinking of the, uh, the, uh, the it's talking about the t tale of two pearls. I've been actually explaining to Christian friends recently uh, like pastors at my church, that uh, Bitcoin is a, a pearl of great price. Um, so here's the parable of the treasure and the pearl uh, in Matthew. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And in his joy, he went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. When he found one very precious pearl... He went away and sold all he had and bought it. And I have a slide and I zoom in on it and it says, he went away and sold all his chairs and bought Bitcoin. <laughs> so it makes, makes you think, we are this guy in this narrative of we found this very valuable, important thing in the world and we are willing to sell what we have and sacrifice to get as much of it as we, we can. This is a pearl of great price. But the kingdom of heaven, says Jesus, is the pearl of great price. Um, the man in his, the passage went and sold all his Bitcoin to get this one precious pearl, the kingdom of heaven. So if we set up Bitcoin as the most important thing in our lives, uh, then, then I'm like the guy who went to go buy the best pearl in the world, but I, I ended up with like a cheap knockoff imitation. I got bamboozled, you know? Uh, so am I seeking the best pearl or just a pretty good pearl? Which I believe Bitcoin's a pretty good pearl, but it's not, is it the best pearl? Um, Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And I'm sure a lot of us have thought about this passage in terms of you know, our relationship with Bitcoin. Uh, we, just, we have to realize that this utmost place in our hearts is in contention. And, and we have this natural sickness. How sick is it that my heart starts worshiping the creation rather than the creator? What is wrong with me? And, uh, and Jordan mentioned uh, uh, Romans. Um, this is Romans 1 says, uh, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, been being understood from his workmanship so that men are without excuse. Later it says, uh, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is forever worthy of praise. Amen. So we, we have this tendency to confuse a gift from God, which is his creation, and the common graces that he gives to us, like Bitcoin, we have a tendency to confuse this gift with God himself. So as far as how I, um, I'm trying to approach uh, overcoming this, uh, this problem, uh, I think that they made two tracks on it, but uh, you know, do I think too much of Bitcoin? I do think pretty highly of Bitcoin and I think a lot about it, obviously dedicate a lot of my time to it. Um, or do I think too little of God? Um, I really like this passage in Job where Job has been just doing a little bit of complaining, really not a lot in the context, and, and, and 
the Lord challenges Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this who obscures my counsel by words without knowledge? Now brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall inform me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who fixed its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its foundations set? Or who laid its cornerstone while the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? So you you basically have to be dumb or corrupted by sin to miss God's preeminence over nature that he created. And I am often both things. Uh, So how do I repent? Uh, So this is the really fun part. Hate Bitcoin. Uh, And I have a a picture of Paul Krugman right here. (laughs) We must become like Paul Krugman. We must learn how to hate Bitcoin. Um, In Luke 14, uh, it says, large crowds were now traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life. He cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. So I'm, I'm, maybe I'm letting you guys off easy. We must hate Bitcoin as much as we hate our father and mother and wife and children. Um, we... It, and, and, and it also, you know, so in, in the, the treasures in heaven thing, the, you know, do not store your treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I think Bitcoiners, we think we're getting away with something because uh, moths can't really destroy Bitcoin. But where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, I think would be a key takeaway. Um, but it later it says, no one can serve two masters. He will hate the one or love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. So we have to hate uh, one of these masters. So we don't store up treasures and we hate our family. And, and so I think we hate Bitcoin. And, and again, back to my disclaimer, whatever that means to you, I think this is a good time to consult your local shepherd. Um, but I believe these are relative statements. I actually had this conversation with my pastor. He was preaching on greed recently. Um, relative to Christ, relative to salvation, relative to the kingdom of heaven, and relative to the creator God, we hate Bitcoin, we hate our family, we hate our own lives. But I would rather have no earthly treasure, I'd rather just put my seed words on the screen right now, then lose my salvation. So I don't want to be doing a delicate balancing walk like, oh, I hope I'm on the right side of this line, you know. So where is my treasure right now? Now, how do I check myself on this? Uh, I, I think it's pretty simple of, of the, or it's, it's, I guess there's a lot to it. One simple thing is, is out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Uh, you know, if Bitcoin is number one in my heart, I'll know it by my words and actions. You know, I forgot that this today was industry day. And I was really excited to see a bunch of uh, talks at the open source stage. I am a huge nerd and I really enjoy this Bitcoin stuff. And so the fact that these, you know, God and Bitcoin could, could come into tension, I think says a lot. Um, and, you know, we'll know uh, people by their fruit. In the, the, there's treasure words in the, the passage about fruit in Matthew 12. Make a tree good and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For out of the overflow of the heart the mouth speaks. It's like, think about when you're talking about Bitcoin to all your friends all the time, it's because your heart is fixated on it. The good man brings good things out of his good store of treasure. And the evil man brings evil things out of his evil store of treasure. But I tell you that men will give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. So people will know where our treasure is. Um, I'm also reminded of the, 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 the parable of the sower and the seeds. One of the seed situations is other seeds, others are like the seeds sown among the thorns. 
We, they hear the word, but worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And I, the thing that really stuck out to me there is the deceitfulness of wealth, right? It's, it's, we might think we don't have a problem with Bitcoin, but is that, you know, is that the deceitfulness of wealth? And we can deceive others, even our own selves, and we can become unfruitful, despite hearing the word. Uh, and a classic sign of addiction, this is again from my pastor's sermon on greed recently, is when you start lying about it. So I don't know what that means to you, but you know, I, this is another way to check yourself on this. So I want to come back to Jordan Peterson, and he's a big uh, inspiration of a lot of these think pieces who kind of equate Bitcoin with God. He, uh, I was listening to a, a podcast episode called God and Christianity. So he didn't write this. I don't want to like rake them over the coals or, or whatever. Uh, this is, you know, uh, I don't know how well re he has reasoned this specifically, but he says that core thing that's admirable that I imitate that's psychologically equivalent to Christ, whatever else Christ is. That's why he's sometimes described as the king of kings. When you see, that ref when you see reflections of that figure anywhere, it produces awe and respect. Um, I love Jordan Peterson, as a lot of other Bitcoiners do. And I don't know if this Bitcoin is God meme is a continuation of what Jordan Peterson is saying or a corruption of what he's saying. Um, I dismiss as irrational the thought that Bitcoin is comparable to God. Other than in the, the common sense that, that anything good is a shadow of God's goodness. But whenever I let Bitcoin become psychologically equivalent to Christ, my hope, my gospel, my salvation, I'm just another prophet of Baal, who, by the way, were all killed by Elijah <laughs> and the people of Israel after the, the bet. Um, and I'm not saying that we should uh, go out and kill John Vallis. I'm saying that we have the prophets of Baal in our own hearts, and we should, ins we should slaughter them uh, internally. So I love Bitcoin. I think uh, Bitcoin is our best opportunity ever to separate money and state. I love it as a technology, as a nerd. It's so accessible and open. Uh, there are no gatekeepers. Uh, it's a beautiful, simple design that is actually understandable uh, compared to our fiat system of money. And I love it as economics. I love a sound, hard money, printing proof uh, currency and a more honest store of value. Um, and there's, there's a lot of really great things to, that could be said about Bitcoin and I'm really appreciative of it. But do they say about Bitcoin, he is risen. Bitcoin hasn't saved me from hell. Bitcoin hasn't known me and loved me from the foundation of the earth. Bitcoin didn't create the world. We don't need Bitcoin where we're going. You know, in heaven, the uh, gold loses its monetary premium and it's used for uh, paving the streets. <laughs> so possibly Bitcoin will have some similar outcome. Um, we do need to know and serve Jesus, otherwise he'll say to us, depart from me, I know you not. So God versus Bitcoin is a war waged in our hearts, and spoiler alert, God wins. So thank you so much for having me.